What's up, guys? We're here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going over a Necromancer Trag Ghouls Blood Nova build guide for you. It's been highly, highly requested, um, not only from the people inside the stream, my lovely community, but on our YouTube comments. So we're going to go over everything that you need for the build and how to play it and then showcase it as we do. Okay, so you're going to need Trag Ghouls. You need five of the six pieces. Uh, blood Rush and Siphon Blood gain the effect of every rune. And our life spending abilities no longer require cost of essence, which is vital. This is why it's a little bit stronger than uh, the other versions of the build with Anaris and or LOD. So then while at full life, our healing skills add up to 30% or excuse me, uh, are added up to our maximum life for 45 seconds up to 300% more. And then our life spending abilities deal 10,000% increased damage and our healing from skills is increased by 100%. Very, very good. So even though the Necromancer is kind of uh, squishy, we actually heal quite a bit. So what I've done is I've combined this with the Guardian set, which is very, very powerful. We get the 100% additional of our base stats added on, which is crazy. It makes this build super, super strong. Then of course we have Mantle of Channeling. So that way when we're channeling Siphon Blood, which is gonna trigger our Blood Nova, we do everything in that. We get the additional damage there. Then of course we got our three main items in here. We have Haunted Visions, which allows our simul Simulacrums to drain 1%, but then they do not die. They last forever which is good. You must have this. Captain Crimson's for a little bit more um, uh, damage against slowed enemies, and then it's tripled if they're affected by another control impairing effect, which is huge. And then COE for just more damage, guys. You know how this one works. Now down to our two main items that you need. These are the two most important. We have Funerary Pick, which uh, allows us to drain from two additional targets, doing increased damage, and then we get a Siphon Blood Power Shift bonus up to 20% per stack, which is huge. This is a huge power increase. And then with Iron Rose, this is the bread and butter of the build. Attacking with Siphon Blood has a 100% chance to cast a free Blood Nova. After losing 10% of my max life, your Blood Nova deals a 50% increased damage. It stacks up to 10 times. Fantastic. So you, even though you could manually cast Death Nova, everything is gonna be coming through Siphon Blood. Uh, it's the key item in the build. You must have Iron Rose. Now over to the cube. This is our speed variant. So we have a uh, blood tide blade. So death Nova deals more damage to each enemy in 25 yards up to 25 enemies. Stuart Greaves, where we get all of our movement. This is why we can speed around and just dash. We can just get from one group of mobs to another group of monsters and just destroy everything. And then ring of Royal Grandeur to pair the two sets together into our skills and passives. We have Siphon Blood Power Shift, as we talked about before, for the increased damage and to uh, give us some additional poison damage. And then we heal as we uh, channel. Then we got Death Nova, Blood Nova. This is our big damage dealer. Blood Rush Potency. I chose Potency because I like the armor increase because we are going to be up close and personal against mobs. We kind of want to get group them up and just deal all of our AOE damage up close. Okay, this isn't a range build by any means. Then we got Aura of Frailty, Frailty, so that we have a Aura that we don't have to cast. It's just automatically happening, which will help trigger our Crafting Crimson Sentence with Bone Armor. You have to do both. Okay, Bone Armor and Desolation is going to stun them. So we have the Aura here. We have our Bane of the Trapped and then Bone Armor uh, Desolation, which will stun, which will help proc uh, Captain, or excuse me, Crimson Sentence. Then, of course, Simulacrum, Blood, and Bone, so we get two. So we have three people hitting with Blood Nova, which is fantastic. Our legendary gems are Bane of the Trap for more damage and CC effects. Zayas Stone of Vengeance for more damage, although we should probably swap this out, and then Bane of the Powerful. You can always swap out Captain Crim, or excuse me, Zayas Stone of Vengeance for Bane of the Stricken is a good option. You can also swap out for uh, Gogok. You could swap out for... Um, Molten Will to Beast Gizzard. Any one of those are fine. I just have Zayas Stone of Vengeance um, just to help kind of trigger, but Bane of the Trapped is also very good. All right, so after that, into our passives, we have Standalone. We increase our armor by 100%, reduce by 10% for each active minion. We're going to have two, so we get an 80% buff. Swift Harvesting increases our attack speed with Siphon Blood. Uh, spreading Maldiction receives a 1% bonus for each enemy affected by one of our curses, which should be all the time when we're up close and personal. Now, I chose Dark Reaping here, so we gain 2% Essence on life and uh, life per kill. 
Now, if you are playing on hardcore or you're pushing, you're going to be using uh, Final Service instead, but I just like that one. Okay, so that is the build, guys. We're gonna go in and do a 90 and just showcase this real fast. Uh, and this is how you play the build, pretty much. So what you're gonna wanna do is you spawn in, you pop Simulacrum. Okay, you're gonna want to get your, this is key here and it's a little, little pro tip. If you get your Siphon Blood maxed out first and then you do um, Simulacrum, you get a bigger bonus, that 300% bonus, which is really important. And then Distillation when we get a group to stun them and then you just use Blood Rush to pop around. It's pretty easy. Let's roll. Super easy. Let's go. Let's do it. Give me that. And then we just blood rush. We got a really good map for this. The only thing I hate about this build in general is just the slight delay when you start channeling. It's it's the only thing that's kind of annoying is that you get a delay when you're channeling, which just kind of sucks. And I'm getting a major delay right now. It's the only bummer. It's the only bummer. But as you can see, you just dash around. You channel Siphon Blood. It's super, super easy. Super fun. Group these guys up. Your Simulacrum should never, ever die. If you really wanted some more speed, you could swap out the Dark Reaping uh, for the Fuel ability but you don't really have a way to, to use up the corpses so that would have been really cool boom just destroy everything now again guys this is a base 90 we're not we don't really have high level gems right but we are kind of crushing like the aoe damage on this build is just insane you just dash and you just blood rush into a group of mobs channel and just kill everything it's super great Ooh, I'm trying to jump in on me, man. We might be able to one floor of this. So you can manually cast it as well. You see, you could always manually cast, which is a lot faster. I really wish there wasn't such a delay when you're channeling. Um, I think it should it should just pop as soon as you're doing it. Because that one second of channeling, like you can just, just spawn that so easily. But the build is super, super fun. Very, very strong. Very, very strong. It's definitely the strongest Necromancer build that they have in the game. Our our only difference here is this is our speed variant as opposed to our push variant, which only changes three items, believe it or not, guys. So, single target damage, very easy on a Rift Guardian. They just basically just pop. They would have popped even faster if I hit them with Desolation. Boom. Super easy. Two and a half minute run, no problem. No, no problem. The build is super, super good, easy to gear. It is an absolute blast to play this build. Super fun. Boom, two minutes, 35 seconds, not bad for a 90. Uh, and then the difference here in our push variant is swapping out the Guardian set for, or excuse me, yeah, Guardian set for, um, Ogduels, and then you swap the belt out for Dante's Binding, and you put um, Mantle of Channeling in the cube. So guys, that is our Tragul's Blood Nova speed build. It is very, very fun. It's pretty dang fast, and it's an absolute blast to build. The only negative for me is the, the delay when you're channeling. So this build, I definitely like more for pushing, uh, but it is very, very, very strong. So like the video, guys. Let me know what you think about the build, and if you're playing Necro this season in uh, Season 28. And as always, stay gaming. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.